Now that we have a way of adding customers, I want to be able to filter by active and inactive customers. Another popular thing to do with a customer list. In this episode, we're going to be refactoring our code to accept an active column. That way, we can select if a customer is active or inactive. And for now, we're going to do that on creation. But as with any project, you can always add that later to an edit menu if you wanted to change the status of a customer. But we are just going to keep it simple. So here's what I'm thinking. I want to add a third row here, and it's going to be a drop down menu. And then I want to have two lists down here. My left list is going to be my active customers list, and my right list is going to be my inactive customers list. So let's start by modifying our view. Let's go to PHP Storm, and let's look at our customers view. So here we are in our view. Right before the add customer, let's add a new div with a form group, and let's add a select. And the name of our select is going to be active. We'll keep ID as active active as well and let's add an option option is going to be empty and we'll just say disabled let's put a label on this select customer status let's add another option that's going to be a one for active and let's add inactive and we'll give that a value of zero all right so this needs a class class a form control let's check out the browser there we go so we have a nice drop down and we can select active or inactive and let's add a label so label it's for active we'll say status but right now this doesn't do anything let's start with our migration let's go to the create customers table migration and we need to add a new column here. So it's not going to be a string. Let's use an integer. And we'll call it active. Now that we've modified our migration, we need to roll back the database and roll it forward again. So let's do that now. PHP artisan migrate roll back. So that deletes the customers table. Let's go ahead and run PHP artisan migrate. So now we have our customers table again. With that, of course, we lost all of our customers. But at this point, if we tried to add a new customer, it would not save the customer status. And that is because we haven't changed our controller. Let's go to our controller, customers controller, and right down here. So we are assigning a name, an email, and we need to assign a status. So we'll say active, and that will come from our request which means that we need to make that also required. We'll say active is required. All right, let's give this a run. Let's see what happens. So our name would be test name. Our email will be something.com and we'll give it a status of active, add customer. All right, so our customer got added. Let's add an inactive customer now. We'll set that to inactive, add customer. Right now, we are fetching all of our customers. So they all get put in this left list. But like I said, I actually wanted two columns. I want a column for active customers, and I want a column for inactive customers. So let's go back to my customers blade and scroll down. And here's the section where we are echoing out each of our customers. So one thing you'll notice is we have this customers variable here in our view. And if you recall, we are fetching that from our database. Right here in the list menu, we have this customers variable, and we are simply fetching all of our customers. But that's no longer going to work because we need to fetch our inactive customers and we need to fetch our active customers. So let's modify our controller to do that now. So we'll call them active customers equals customer and the way you do this in eloquent is we need to add a where clause so our active customers are where the active column is set to one and then get me all of the results does that make sense so to fetch our active customers we're reaching into our customers table and saying where the active column is set to one give me all of the results so let's do the inverse now 
inactive customers come from customer where the active column is set to zero and get me all of the results for that. Just to show you, I'm going to die and dump the active customers list. Let's go back to the browser, hit refresh. So there we are. So we have one entry. Makes sense. We just have our entry that was the test name entry. And notice that the active column is set to one. Let's die and dump the inactive customers. Hit refresh. We have one as well. And we dive into the attributes. We see that the active is equal to zero. Now we have two variables. We have active customers and inactive customers. So let's get rid of this customer all call because that no longer applies. And now we need to send both of these variables to our view. Let's do it in the long form way. So active customers equals active customers and then in active customers we'll set that equal to inactive customers there we go so now we need to modify our view let's change our column to six so that way we can have two columns equal size so we'll say for each active customers as active customer let me go ahead and modify this as well active customer so for each of those we'll go ahead and echo out the same we've been doing and let me duplicate this same thing and we're going to modify it from active to inactive so we have our first iteration here through active customers and then we do the same exact thing through our inactive customers finally let's just add a label here we'll say h3 active customers and we'll add another h3 here in active customers let's check out what we have and there we are so now we have a nice list of active customers and we have a list of inactive customers let's add a new active customer here just to prove that it's working we'll say another person with a random email and he's an active customer so that gets put in the active column and let's add an inactive customer. Inactive, add customer, and there we go. So we are properly adding active customers and inactive customers using that new column that we added to the database. One last thing I wanna show you. I wanna show you a shorthand notation for passing data into views. And you will probably end up using this most of the time. There is a function called compact. And what compact will do is this exact same operation. Notice that active customers is referencing an active customers variable. And then we have inactive customers and that references an inactive customers variable. So this is very redundant. So we can get rid of all of this and we can say compact and all you're going to pass in is just the name of the variable. So active customers and as a second argument, inactive customers much cleaner way. So this is doing the exact same thing that we were doing before. We hit refresh and so we see that we have the exact same thing. Let's recap the entire episode. So the first thing we did was we went into our view and we added a status column. We did that using a select which is just a drop down menu and we have active which is a value of one and inactive which is a value of zero. So then we went to our migration. Remember the migration describes the database. So whenever we're gonna do any changes to our database, we need to go ahead and change a migration. Just as a recap on that, migrations only roll forward. So if you have some code in production, you would have made a new migration which modified the customer's table and added the integer active. However, we are still in development and during the development process, you can change your migrations as many times as you want. Do know that when you do and you roll back, you're going to lose any test data that is in your database. We will look at database seeders later on, which is a very convenient way of seeding test data into a database. So for now, you will simply lose your data. You'll have to add your data back in. Just keep that in mind as a side note. We added our integer column 
with the name of active. So in our controller, in our store method, remember this is the method that we hit. Whenever we hit this button right here, we are targeting this method right here. The first thing we did was make active required. That makes sense. Without having anything for active, it doesn't quite work. Our query would blow up because it requires an active column. So after doing that, then we are setting our active column in our customer to be that request active. So we return back, which means that we go to our list. And what I wanted to do was have two columns. I wanted to separate my active customers from my inactive customers. That way we can show that we were actually storing that variable. So what I did was I split up into two variables. Now we have this active customers, which is fetching into our customer and saying where active, that column that we just talked about, equals to one, get me all of the results and save them to active customers. And then we do the inverse. We say inactive customers equals go into my customers and wherever the active column is set to zero, get me all of those results. And then we're gonna return our view and we're passing our data in this new compact way. The compact function does the exact same thing we've been doing of assigning active customers equal to active customers as an array and inactive customers equal to inactive customers. The difference is this is just a shorthand notation for doing that so you don't have all of that repetition. But great job so far. If you've been following along, go ahead and make these changes to your project now.